Hello and welcome to Unite Under Books. This video is going to be a bit of a gap filler. So these are all of the books that we've read in the past few months when we've been taking a part hiatus from video making that are nominated for a Hugo in the novelette or novel series categories. Unfortunately, this isn't really going to be a rundown of how we voted or a review of all of those books because a lot of them we actually read last year. It's also not going to be very helpful in helping you decide how to vote, since you should have done that already because the awards have been awarded. We're going to be relatively short with most of these books, or that's the aim, because we've got quite a few to cover. So to kick off with the novella category, the first story I'm going to talk about is The Black God's Drums by P. Jelly Clark. I really enjoyed this story. I rated it 4.25 stars. What really made it stand out to me was its setting. So there's a steampunk New Orleans during the time of the American Civil War, but it's a free state. Magic is all based around African gods. And this setting felt very real to me. It had its own secrets and it had its own history. And I really enjoyed his writing style. So I want to read more from the author. I'd be quite happy if this was the start of a series. So this one was very much up there on the list for me. The Tea Master and the Detective by Aliette de Bodard uh, is the next one up. This is quite a slow story. Um, it's a um, sort of a murder mystery, um, though uh, really the star here is neither the murderer nor the Sherlock Holmes analogue, uh, but the setting itself, um, which is richly detailed. Yes, I enjoyed the setting for this one, but the plot didn't grab me as much. I quite enjoyed um, having Watson as an AI mind ship, mm. um, but I don't think I was quite as endeared to the Holmes analogue. The next one is another one I really enjoyed, and that's Gods, Monsters and the Lucky Peach by Kelly Robson. This is a time travel story focused on ecology, and my favourite thing about it was that it didn't really follow a normal story structure. Mm. It's all about academics trying to get their project approved and funded and then what goes wrong while they're doing their research. Field work is dangerous, especially when it's in the past. Yes. There was some asexual representation which was fun um, and I think the characters overall were quite interesting. Should note that's not all of the slate of um, nominated novellas, uh, but we've uh, the other nominees we've mentioned previously on the channel. So whistling on to the novels now. So Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse is an urban fantasy uh, grounded in Native American mythology and folklore. Um, it's dark, it's gritty, it's fast paced. Um, I've seen it marketed as new adult. Uh, so, you know, uh, stories with all the boring bits taken out. And it delivers on that pretty much. Again, one with quite good world building, set in a post-apocalyptic world that felt quite fresh. Yep. And there's a quite fun relationship between the two main characters. Mm. I found quite endearing. And I see this book has now picked up a UK publisher, which is nice. Yes. Yeah, I rated this 3.75 stars. So for urban fantasy, that's Which pretty good for thing. me. It's not really my thing, but it was different enough. It caught my interest. Next one is Space Opera by Kat Valenti, um, which John read a few months ago. Shortly after it came out. Yeah, whereas I picked this up just for the Hugo Ballot. This is sort of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy meets Eurovision. A washed up rock star is asked to perform on the space stage to prove that humans are sentient which is quite a fun premise and quite a silly one. There were lots of crazy original ideas and it was quite funny, but I found it just a bit long for what it was trying to do. I think I wanted something a bit punchier. The middle bit slowed down a bit, but at least it did speed up again at the end. So I rated it three and a half stars. Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. It's a fairy tale retelling set in an alternate kind of Polish slash Russian, um, quite rural, uh, community which does interesting things with the original tales that it uh, liberally pinches from, uh, notably uh, Rumpelstiltskin. I really enjoyed the Jewish moneylender perspective in this. 
and there's quite a cast of characters but with lots of different shades of grey and you're never quite sure who is the real bad guy. I found it quite atmospheric and gripping but for some reason I didn't quite like it quite as much as Uprooted. One thing I liked about this was the elements of um, found family um, so with uh, one slightly uh, with one quite disadvantaged family being welcomed pretty much wholesale into another. As much as I say I didn't like it quite as much as Uprooted, I still rated it 4.5 stars. Now I'm going to hand over to John because I did not read any of the books, especially for the Hugo series. For this award I uh, reread the first book in the Sentinel Cycle by Marka Alder and read the uh, remaining two. If there is a politics nerd in your life, these books are almost certainly for them. These are um, techno thrillers um, that don't focus on guns and gadgets, but focus on um, election days and ad management um, and uh, navigating bureaucracies. Um, if that sounds incredibly deathly dull to you, maybe still try them out because they are quite good fun. Um, on the other hand, if that sounds uh, like your thing, then you will like these. I also reread the first three books in the Toby Day series by Sean and Maguire and got up to date using the voter pack, so I think that was another eight books. These are, I think, um, my favourite sort of traditional urban fantasy. I th they really are just very good fun. Um, there's a lot of nice um, character progression, uh, both in terms of um, characters actually becoming or developing and changing over time in uh, light of their experiences, but also there's a creeping power level, which means that the threats always feel real and dangerous, even as our protagonist gets more capable and gets more allies. The books have a very um, real sense of place being set in and around San Francisco. Um, some of the scenes I recognise haven't been there on holiday. It's quite an interesting tension between the fact that Toby ends up uh, with ever higher um, status, um, but she is very aware that she is part of a team, and it's the team that does the work, um, and it's that kind of she, she's not a lone hero, um, it's an ensemble piece, which is, I think, the thing I really like. We didn't, as it happens, read, I think, any of the books nominated, or books by any of the authors nominated for the Lodestar Award, so I'm afraid we haven't got any thoughts to share on that. But if any of you have read them and have a few favourites that you think are up our street, then let us know, because you read a lot of them from last year and really enjoyed some of mm -hmm. them. We also didn't read any graphics specifically for the purposes of voting. So that's brought us a bit more up to date on all of the things we've been reading over the past few months. We do probably have a haul we need to do. Because we did slip and buy a couple of books in Dublin at Worldcon. In my defence I've read some of them already so that's better, right? Because they're not going on the TBR? I'll let you off. Let us know your thoughts if you've read any of these books or what your favourites were in the categories. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon.